well, it's that time of year again. Decorations are up across the country, snow and cold are making their way further south with each passing day, and children and adults alike patiently await Christmas. So what might the weather look like as you count down the days till Santa makes his way down your chimney? Well, let's find out. Firstly, we'll take a look at the National Weather Service's forecast. Their forecast calls for much of the U.S. to be warm, with the exceptions of northern Maine, southern Alaska, and the southwest. Looking toward precipitation, much of the southern, eastern, and northwestern parts of the country should expect wet conditions, with dry conditions prevailing across the upper Midwest. Breaking this down further, the 6-10 to 10 day outlook shows a large high-pressure ridge building across the center of the country, bringing warm temps to the Midwest, East, and Southwest, while Alaska stays cool. Precip-wise, all of the country except the Southwest, Southeast Coast, and portions of Alaska and Hawaii stay wet. The 8-14 to 14 day outlook is not much different, with the ridge shifting slightly eastward centering the warmth around Illinois and Missouri. Precip is also very similar, with again most of the country staying wet. The three to four week outlook is where things start to change. This time frame will take us through most of Christmas week. Warmth stays across much of the northern tier and southern Alaska, with equal chances of warm and cold elsewhere. Precip is heightened across the south and lowered across the upper Midwest. This is similar to a typical El Nino pattern. Now that we've gotten through the NWS forecast, let's see what the models have to say. First up is the European model. What you should focus on for all of these models is not so much how warm or cold the temps are, but where the above and below average temps are placed. So, for the first full week of December, much of the country looks to stay warm here, excluding New England, Florida, and the Intermountain West. For December 11th through the 18th, the warmth shifts eastward, leaving much of the west with average or below average temps. The next week, which takes us to Christmas Day, shows much of the same, with a warm east and cool west. Moving up to New Year's Day, things start to change. The south starts to cool down, while the warmth retreats to the north. This is once again reminiscent of a common El Nino pattern. Our next model is the CFSV2. Starting out from the end of November to December 6, this model predicts warmth across much of the country, with excessive heat in the deep south and north. The second week of December once again features heat, this time moving westward instead of eastward. Cool conditions start to build across the south during this time. The next week shows a huge change, with a large area of cold air forming over southern Canada that begins to pour into the northern U.S. The south and west still stay warm here. The final week this model goes to shows the cold air bleeding further south, reaching the entire eastern U.S. besides Florida. The last two models I'll show are the North American and Canadian models. The North American shows most of the country being warm this month, with the warmth being most present in the upper Midwest. This model shows both coasts being very active and wet with the only dry areas in the northern Rockies and southwest. Next, the Canadian is much more bullish on the warmth, bringing once again warmth to much of the country, except the southwest this time. This model similarly shows both coasts being wet, though the Canadian is more insistent on dry conditions in the southwest. So, taking all of this info into account, here are my personal forecasts for the upcoming month of December. Starting out with temperatures, much of the country looks to stay warmer than average throughout the month, especially so in the upper Midwest and Plains. Of course, this does not mean you will be 70 or 80 degrees the whole month, but temperatures should stay more warm than cool. The few exceptions from warmth are the Southwest and New England, where average to slightly below average temps could be possible, especially at elevation. Next is precipitation and it should come as no surprise that the northwest will be very wet this month. The area has seen immense rainfall the past few weeks and will continue to see very heavy precipitation through much of the month. The other area of enhanced precip is the southeast, mid-south, mid-Atlantic, and parts of the northeast, 
where a fairly frequent storm track will likely produce high rainfall. Unfortunately for snow lovers in this area, most if not all of this will fall as rain as the common storm track does not look to support snowstorms yet. The southwest and Great Lakes regions should see below average precip, especially so in northern Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. My next map is snowfall anomalies. The northwest and Rockies should expect well above average snowfall, especially at the highest elevations. Northern New England should also see slightly above average snowfall due to a storm track to your south. The upper Midwest could see slightly below average snowfall as clipper systems do not look to be plentiful this month, but you should still see some snow. This may not be the case in the southern Northeast, Mid-Atlantic, and Ohio Valley, however, as the storm track and cold air do not look to support snow this month. Many areas here, especially in the darker brown, may not see any snow this month, or it may wait until the very end of the month. Lastly, here is my prediction map for what you should expect this month. Starting in the coastal northwest, heavy rain events look to be very frequent this month, especially early. Landslides and mudslides may be a concern, so stay vigilant. A slow start to winter in the northern southwest looks to be the case. Many of the precip events look to stay to your north, leaving you with clouds and little rain. The rest of the southwest looks to see much of the same, with a dry but slightly cool December possible, though the cool air will mostly be at elevation. Heavy mountain snow will strike much of the Rockies and northwest this month, with snowfall anomalies well above average in areas. The upper Midwest should have a very mild start to the month, with cold air outbreaks possibly becoming more likely later in the month. Snowfall will be limited, but a couple of storms cannot be ruled out. The Great Lakes look to be somewhat dry this month, with few lake effect events. Like the upper Midwest, snowfall will be limited, but some storms are possible. Much of the Plains, Ohio Valley, and southern New England could see a few mixed events this December, though accumulations of any wintry precip are unlikely, except at higher elevations in southern New England. The southern plains look to stay warm, with more precip to the east and less to the west. Frankly, this looks like a fairly unremarkable month for this area. The same cannot be said for the deep south, however, where heavy rain and very wet conditions will be present, though a dry period may present itself over the next week or so. The rest of the southeast and the southern mid-Atlantic will be stormy at times, though not as much as the deep south or the northwest. The northern mid-Atlantic, northeast, and parts of the Ohio Valley should see limited snow chances this December, especially through mid-month. However, a colder and snowier pattern may present itself during the last week of the month, but this is too far out to accurately predict. Finally is northern New England, where snowy conditions should be expected, especially early on. A heavy rain event or two is possible mid-month, which may melt much of the snowpack. Thanks for watching. I know it's been a month since my last video, but I will hopefully have my final winter forecast and white Christmas chances videos up soon. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.